their plays, even though they appear to be very real at times, you can go to a play and feel very moved by it or disturbed by it or elated by it. But at the end of the day, it's a story. It's a story, that's all it is, it's a story. And you and I are all stories and we're living an illusionary story when we are identified with our form, when we are identified with our egoic minds. And, and that sometimes uh, can be very stressful because if you have noticed in your life, your play changes all the time, and the characters change all the time. And remember, in a play, you are the, the composer of the play, you are the, uh, the author of the play, you are the director of the play, you are each character in the play, you're the setting, the staging of the play. And the beauty of that is you can change it up any time you so desire. But in the meantime, we're in the story. And the story appears to be real, but it's not. It's not. There's only one reality. And you see, the thing is, when you ask people who are enlightened, um, who are congruent and unified and at one with life, their answers will never come from outside of themselves, ever. Their answers will never come from outside of themselves. They will always come from within. And their answers will never have anything to do with a, a mood or a feeling or an acquisition or a happening or an achievement. It will never have anything to do with that, their answers. Their answers will never have anything to do with an endeavoring, an endeavoring for this or endeavoring for that or endeavoring for the other because they're at one. They are unified. There's no endeavor, they just are. They're in the isness of life and living. Now this is all very strange, this isness. What is this isness and they just are? Well, what does that mean? And it sometimes is annoying when we have to wrap ourselves around all of that. Well, we're not really going to know what all of that is until we become it. But in the meantime, we come to understand through our teaching that Life and its unfolding and its progress has nothing to do with addition. It has everything to do with subtraction. Subtraction. How do you get to that congruence, that unified state of being? You start peeling away layers of illusion. You subtract all these things from your sense and sensibility until you get to the core the gem, the pristine state of at one month that always was, is now, believe it or not, in spite of all of our woes, etc., and always will be. This congruent thing, this unified state, this energy, this vibrancy, this intelligence, you know, that is a point of power by means of you and me, but the point has no circumference, you see. And so it's blended into one thing. I would ask you now to indulge me and close your eyes for a moment and take a deep breath. Just close your eyes for a moment, take a deep breath. And take another one. And take another one. And now picture for yourself a beautiful setting by the sea. There's a little boat there and it's beckoning you. And you get into it and it moves out, moves out into the sea. And that feels very good. It's a beautiful, calm sea. It's a gorgeous, uh, lovely, mild, soft, cool breeze. And you feel comfortable. And there you are. And the boat's moving itself. You don't have to do anything about it. And you feel entirely safe. You feel entirely safe. safe. And now you're way away from the shore and water surrounds you. Water surrounds you. And now you're going to sense yourself buoyant, light of being, and you're going to see yourself in the water without a boat, but you're buoyant. You're in the water without a boat, buoyant, and it feels good, it feels great. You feel supported, you feel at one with the water, you feel its energy, you become part of the energy. And now you cannot see where your body begins and ends and the water begins and ends. The bodily boundaries of yourself disappears. It disappears. Now, since you are one with the water, now where are you in the water? Where are you now in the water since you're bodiless and formless? Where are you in the water? Where are you in the sea? 
And what does that feel like? What does that feel like to be this buoyancy, to be this amazing lightness of being, vastness of being in the water? Enjoy it. Feel the rhythm, the pace, the beat, the power, the expansiveness of the sea. And now, graciously take a deep breath. Find yourself in body form again and in the boat. You're in the boat. You're in bodily form again in the boat. The boat's taking you back, back, back to the shore. And back to the shore. And now, you're going to step out of the boat onto the beautiful sand that feels good under your feet. And you're going to take a deep breath and you're going to come back into this room and back into this room, back into this room now. And here you are, back in form, back in this day, back in this time. You're back in the illusion. You're back into the illusion again. Now, we don't have time to ask each and every one of you where you were in the water once you became formless. But I so imagine that all of us who were able to do that became the whole vastness of the sea. We were one with the sea. We were no longer the cork being bobbed around in the ocean. We were the very movement of the ocean itself. And that is the truth of your being. Now here's the thing, if you and I want to be awake, there's no way we're going to awaken and get into that spiritual congruence and that at one moment and be in that presence and be in the moment here and now if we're all the time being ego-led, ego-led, ego-moved, um, ego-projected, ego-defined. It just can't happen. I cannot be an awakened, lively energy and spirit and at the same time be ego-driven. It's impossible. That's duality. I can't be both at the one time. I have to be one or the other. So you and I are, are invited to give ourselves enough opportunities to be, to be the energy, to be the pulse, to be the vibration of life itself, formless, and consequently um, problemless as a result of that, experience that sometimes so that we can maneuver this thing called uh, the egoic illusion of life while we're here on this planet Earth uh, and having this amazing experience, which can be great fun at times and at other times can be a nightmare, depends on where our sense and sensibilities land and our attention is given, you see, and our thought processes, whatever they are upon, which creates the feeling response as well. So it's up to you and it's up to me to decide, uh, do I want to awake or not? Am I happy just not being instead of being? Because I cannot be, I am and I am not at the same time. I'm either one or the other. One or the other. And so when we are open to understanding that the form of ourselves, everything that's material and in form is transitory and will dissipate itself, and will no longer be itself as I know it in this form, that in that form, and this in this form. It's going to morph into something else and become some, some other vibrational form at some other time, some other place, and some other state. So all of this is transitory, all of this is temporary, all of it, as a consequence, is illusionary because it's not the permanent truth. It's not truth, and truth is always the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It's not, it's not permanent, the truth is, you see. So am I going to work myself up into frenzies, endeavoring to be this identity that I've decided I am, this personality and this body that I am, and fight in tooth and nail to preserve it and safeguard it and to defend it? Or am I just going to understand this is so very much the little aspect of me, the small part of me, the temporary part of me, you know, the, it's kind of like uh, it's, 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 it lasts as long as maybe going through a revolving door. And then I'm finished with it. I'm into the next experience, you see. And yet we put so much into this. 
Especially um, if you think about cosmetic surgery and how much money and the billions and the billions and the billions that goes into maintaining this and keeping this looking as great as it possibly can be and to keep it looking as uh, young as ever it can be for as long as it can look and so on and so forth. Now, that's a fun thing. Remember, that's an okay thing because this is all a game anyway. And that's part of the game that we play. Of course, you can look at some of us and say, well, maybe you could have played that game a bit more and you'd look a bit better, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's all relative and subjective, you see. <laughs> and I would say to that, mind your own business, play your own game and I'll play mine, you know? Uh, and, and whatever it is, it's not bad or good, it just is. It's just you and me engaging in the illusion at whatever level we're engaging in the illusion and playing the games that we, we wish to play while we're there. But listen, here's games we don't need to play. The games of sorrow and sadness and suffering and all of that. Those are games we could really put aside if we so desire. If we just sow the sire. I want to ask you to close your eyes again now for one moment and, and just indulge me here. And just take a deep breath. And now I would ask you to hone in on an experience that you have had, maybe fairly recently, fairly recently. It could be an experience of anger, an experience of um, separation, an experience of um, grief, an experience of um, disappointment. Whatever it is, I'm asking you to hone in on something that pulls your energy down, that sucks your energy up, that leaves you in a state of uh, discombobulating at some time times or other. Just, just hone in on that experience and now think about the story that created it, the reason for it. Just think about that story and uh, just allow yourself to feel that. And now I'm going to ask you to let go of the story. Let go of the story and just feel the feeling. Feel the anger, feel the pain, feel the loneliness, feel whatever it is you're feeling. I'm just going to ask you to feel it. Where does it show up in your body? Does it show up in your jaw? Does it show up in your stomach? Does it show up in your chest? Does it show up in your hands? Does it show up in your skin? Where does that feeling show up in your body? And just recognize it, just recognize it. And you're only being with the feeling now, you're one with the feeling for no reason except just to experience what it is to feel the pain of anger or the pain of grief or the pain of separation, whatever that is. You just want to allow yourself to feel it, recognize it and let it be. Now I want you to step out of that feeling and observe it from a distance. Step out of the feeling and observe it from a distance. Who's observing the feeling now? Who's observing the feeling now? What is the thought of the feeling now as it is being observed? Now move back into the feeling, become the feeling again. Allow yourself to feel what that is, what it feels like, what its color is, what its tone, what its texture is. Now come out of the feeling again and observe it. Observe the feeling now. Just observe it, its tone, its texture, its color, the energy of it, what that seems to be, what that looks like. Just, just observe that now. And again, ask yourself the question, who is observing the feeling? Which is the reality? The observer of the feeling or the feeler feeling the feeling? Which is the reality? Which is the truth? Who, what is observing the feeling? Now just breathe deeply three times and release the feeling. Breathe it out. Breathe it out. Breathe it out. Breathe it out. Breathe it out out. Come back into the room. That exercise is part of what it is to be awake. That exercise is part of what it is to be awake. You paid attention. You focused. You became congruent. You became the observer and the witness. You became your great self. Witnessing that. Witnessing that. Witnessing the form and what the form does. 
understanding. You're not the form, and you're certainly not what the form does. And you have the power to do that all of the time. And that ought to help us all to get back into the alignment between the human and the divine. And to have a working relationship with it that is congruent. And not always fighting with each other. Or not one thing at one time and one thing at another time but to understand how the energies mix and mingle and can flow, can flow together, unified, unified, you see. We're very, very sparing with the thoughts and the feelings we have about ourselves as far as good thoughts and good feelings, affirming thoughts and affirming feelings, as far as encouragement of the self is concerned, as far as affirmation of the self is concerned, as far, far as the upliftment of the self is concerned. We're a bit over-identified with our human uh, characters and personalities and tendencies and so on. And we're inclined to judge each other all the time based on personality. And the whole idea of judging each other on personality really and truly is judging each other on the basis of illusion. Because I'm not my personality and you are not yours. And whatever you think about me, it's not true. Whatever I think about you is not true. It's not along the lines of negativity, that is. Any negative thing you're thinking about me is not true, and any negative thing I'm thinking about you is not true. It's based on illusion, that decision. And yet, that's what causes us to have difficulty in all of our relationships, isn't it? Because I know you're to be a this, and I know you to be a that, and I know you're a whatever, and no, you don't, and I don't either. The only thing I can know you as being is the infinite expression of life itself showing up in human form. And consequently, if I'm awakening, I'm supposed to be able to connect with you at that level and not judge you by your whatever, you see. And that's the call today to be awake for the whole week to stay awake and to stay in the truth and to stay in the recognition that I am living in an illusionary game on planet three-dimensional Earth, and that I am not my form. I am not the material matter that you see. Neither are you. And I am so much more than that, and so are you. And so I'm called this week, and you're called this week, to behold only the truth in everything and everyone as we go through the week. And as we do, we are called, we are invited by all of us all over the world to stay in the energy of deciding to find at least three things to be glad about every day. We're asked to be glad about three things every day, no matter how rotten and awful the human day happens to be. We're supposed to dig through the debris of all of that and find three things I can be glad about and become Pollyanna for a week. And the story is told to us today of Pollyanna, who was glad about everything and everyone and so on and so forth. And as a result of that, she couldn't be put down, she couldn't be stopped, she couldn't be blocked from thinking something good about everything everything and everyone, and then comes into a crisis herself, and then as she goes deep into the doldrums of not being able to find anything to be glad about when she use, loses the use of her legs, and of course she's a flibbity gibbet and always on the move, then what happens and to bring her up out of the doldrums is all the people whose lives she has touched come back to her and they show her how to be glad again about things that happen. And so she becomes glad again. And of course, the, the, if you know the story, she gets the use of her legs back again and so on. And now she's even gladder than ever about everything because not having the use of her legs made her appreciate having the use of her legs. So we are invited to do these things by the organization, to find three things every day in our lives to be glad about, to write into our Thanksgiving journals every day, day and to pay it forward in some way every day because of all the wonderful things that we have in our lives that we can be in celebration over. And in that way, we're supposed to shine our light so that the world can be brighter. And the affirmation we've been given for this week is, 
I will shine my light this week so that the world can be brighter. Well, I would change that. I am shining my light this week so that the world can be brighter. Say it with me. I am shining my light this week so that the world can be brighter. So the magnificence of you will radiate this week, and we will stop over-identifying with what we cannot do, what we are not yet, or what you can't do, or what you are not yet. But be glad and rejoice over all the good that you are already, all the blessings that you enjoy already and are aware of, and come from that energy of, of you know, upliftment, 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 and expansion, and expansion, and expansion. Come into the vibrational energy, the congruency of what life truly is, that beautiful um, way of expanding and contracting and expanding and contracting and expanding and contracting and allow the process to be the process without judgment. And so when people get in your last nerve, you don't go to the people getting on your last nerve. You go to yourself and you say to yourself, okay, what's this about? And what is my response to this? What would be the best response, the spiritual response to this? What would my essential self do in a situation like this? And how would that respond? Not my ego, because we know our ego would go for fisticuffs and slap somebody up the side of the head. That's what it always wants to do, you know. It's, it's attack and defend, attack and defend, as far as the ego is concerned. But what would my true self, what would my spirit self be. And it's not about what would Buddha do and what would Jesus do. Who cares? It's what would you do? It's what would you do? Who are you? Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? And those questions never did much for me. What would Jesus do? Well, Jesus was Jesus, and I don't know what he would do. Maybe he would wither a bush or upset a table in the temple, or I don't know. Very few times did he ever show us any side of that kind of thing happening. Most of the time, it was always a beautiful encounter with him, and he left everybody feeling the better for having come into contact with him. So what would you do, and who would you say you are if somebody asked you? If I asked you, who do you think you are, what would your response be? And don't go there very quickly, because this requires pondering. And please, let us all ponder that question. Who do I think I am? Because whatever I think I am, I'm certainly not. Whatever you think you are, you are not. You are not what you think you are. And you're not what you feel you are. Because it's not about thinking anymore when you go into your spiritualized state of being and that presence that you are. It's about being it. It's simply about being it. So the answer to the question could be anything. But remember, you're going to get wrong answers until you get to the core of who you are. Who am I? And you'll get a whole lot of wrong answers. And then eventually, one day, you and I will ask that question, and we'll get the right answer. And we will, too, be realized. And it's for you and it's for me, because it is written, greater things than I have done can you do. What I have achieved, you can achieve, and you can achieve more. So keep knowing that about yourself, especially when you feel everything is going to hell in a handbasket and I couldn't get any better. It's always going to be like this. It'll never change. This is my life. I better adjust to it and get used to it. It's always going to be a hassle, struggle, and a strain, and a stress. No, not so. Every mood passes, the good and the bad, they all pass, and life becomes something more as a result of it. So this week is about being glad. It's a glad week. It's about rejoicing about yourself, celebrating yourself, appreciating yourself, praising yourself, blessing yourself, uplifting yourself. It begins here, but it doesn't end here. It goes out to do the same for everybody else around and about you. I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. It's a great, good thing. You're amazing. Go and make yourself the only one that you ever want to amaze. Just amaze yourself. And you'll have a fantastic, fabulous week. So thank you for investing in your spiritual enfoldment. There's nothing better you could be doing. And remember, whatever you're looking for, you have it. Whatever answer you want, it's within you. Whatever, 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 it's all here in you, waiting for you to recognize it, release it, and let it out. So let's all commit to being our best selves this week. And so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to shine my light. <laughs> 
so that the world can be brighter. I'm going to shine my light so that the world can be lighter. I'm going to shine my light so that all may see the who of the self, the what of the self. And so it is. It's going to be a great week, my dears.